Be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king to be treated like one. Carry yourself with confidence and dignity to command respect. This is the 34th and maybe the most obvious law in Robert Greene's book, The 48 Laws of Power. In this video, we talk about how to be a stoic king, how to command respect and authority. This is no audiobook or summary video. It is how we explain Robert Greene's book by the light of stoicism. Before starting, we must say we all are very grateful. There is millions of videos like this, but you chose this video. Thank you. Now, let's begin our journey. Chapter 1. The King is Here In the vast tapestry of life, we are all players in a grand drama, each playing our roles with varying degrees of grace and poise. Yet, amid this chaotic dance, some rise above the rest, commanding respect without uttering a word. They do not demand reverence. They inspire it. The secret to this silent authority lies not in the title or wealth they possess, but in their bearing, the way they carry themselves with quiet confidence and unshakable dignity. To act like a king is not to indulge in arrogance or to impose our will upon others. Instead, it is about embodying a sense of self-worth so deeply ingrained that it becomes palpable to those around us. This is not a facade to be worn like a mask. It is a reflection of an inner belief in our value and purpose. When we move through the world with this regal bearing, others instinctively respond to it. They see in us someone who is sure of their path, who is not swayed by the winds of fortune, and who stands tall even in the face of adversity. This law resonates deeply with the stoic principle of apatheia, a state of being untroubled by external events where one's emotions and reactions are governed not by the chaos of the world, but by inner discipline and wisdom. In cultivating a kingly presence, we are practicing a form of stoic detachment, distancing ourselves from the petty concerns that plague the masses and focusing instead on what truly matters. To wield this law effectively is to understand that our presence is our power. It is not about seeking validation from others, but about living in such a way that others cannot help but validate us. We do not need to proclaim our worth. It should be evident in the way we carry ourselves. And in doing so, we not only command respect, but also protect ourselves from those who would seek to diminish us. By embodying the dignity of a king, we create a natural barrier against those who would undermine us, for they will find themselves hesitant to challenge someone who appears so self-assured and unassailable. Chapter 2. The Illusion Authority is, in many ways, an illusion, a perception shaped by how we present ourselves rather than any inherent power we hold. This illusion is a tool, one that can be cultivated and wielded with precision. When we act with the poise of a ruler, others are more likely to perceive us as one, regardless of our actual position or status. It is this perception that grants us influence over others, often far greater than the reality of our circumstances would suggest. Human beings are wired to respond to certain cues, confidence, decisiveness, and calm under pressure. Psychologically, this response is linked to our primal instincts, where the ability to lead and protect was vital for survival. Studies, such as the 1982 research by psychologists Kipling Williams and Stephen Corral, have shown that individuals who display authoritative behaviors, even in ambiguous situations, are more likely to be seen as leaders and are granted more power by those around them. This law, therefore, is not merely about acting with confidence. It is about understanding the triggers that shape others' perceptions and using them to our advantage. When we enter a room with our heads held high, when we speak with clarity and purpose, we are sending signals that we are in control. This creates a ripple effect where others begin to look to us for guidance. Often, without even realizing it, we become, in their eyes, the natural leader, the one who sets the tone and direction. However, this illusion of authority is a double-edged sword. Just as it can elevate us, 
it can also be used against us by those who understand its power. To guard against this, we must be vigilant, always questioning the true source of others' authority. Are they genuinely deserving of the respect they command, or are they simply skilled in projecting an image of power? By cultivating our awareness of these dynamics, we can navigate the complex social landscape with greater wisdom, ensuring that we remain in control of our own destinies. Chapter 3. Vibe. The crown may be heavy, but it is the strength within that truly carries it. Kinginess is not simply about how we appear to others. It is fundamentally about the inner resilience and steadfastness that we cultivate. This is where the true essence of power lies, not in outward displays of dominance, but in the quiet, unyielding strength of our character. In the philosophy of Stoicism, there is a profound emphasis on developing inner fortitude, the kind of strength that does not waver in the face of adversity. The Stoic philosopher, Epictetus, often spoke of the importance of focusing on what we can control our thoughts, our actions, our responses, and letting go of what we cannot. This inner focus is what allows us to maintain our dignity and composure, even when the world around us seems to be falling apart. A ruler, or anyone who aspires to act with the poise of one, must develop this inner strength. It is not enough to project an image of authority. We must be able to back it up with real substance. This means cultivating virtues such as patience, discipline, and wisdom. When we are strong within, we do not need to resort to aggression or manipulation to assert our power. Our presence alone becomes a force that others respect and defer to. Psychologically, people are drawn to those who exude calm and confidence, especially in times of uncertainty. This is why in moments of crisis, the individual who remains composed often rises to the top. It is not because they are louder or more forceful, but because they represent stability, a beacon of strength that others can anchor themselves to. To harness this law, we must turn our focus inward, continually working to strengthen our minds and spirits. We must practice self-control, learning to master our impulses and emotions. When we face challenges, we should welcome them as opportunities to test and refine our inner resilience. Each time we overcome an obstacle, we become stronger, more unshakable, and more capable of leading ourselves and others. But this inner fortitude also serves another purpose. It shields us from those who would seek to undermine us. When we are strong within, external threats lose their power. We are less likely to be swayed by the opinions of others or to be manipulated by those who seek to use our emotions against us. In this way, acting like a king is not just about commanding others. It is about commanding ourselves, mastering the inner realm so completely that the outer world bends to our will. By cultivating this stoic strength, we transform ourselves into the kind of leader who does not need to demand respect. Our very presence commands it. This is the true power, not in the authority we project, but in the unshakable foundation upon which that authority rests, a stoic king. Just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please consider like and subscribe, and thanks a lot if you did already. Moving on. Chapter 4. Protecting the Kingdom A ruler's authority is not only defined by their presence, but also by the boundaries they establish. These boundaries are not just physical or territorial. They are the invisible lines that define what we will and will not tolerate. To act like a king is to be clear about these limits and to enforce them with quiet, unwavering resolve. In life, we often face situations where our boundaries are tested by those who seek to overstep, manipulate, or challenge our authority. It is in these moments that our response defines us. A true ruler understands that allowing others to infringe upon their space, whether personal, emotional, or professional, is a sign of weakness. By clearly delineating our boundaries, we protect our inner kingdom from those who would seek to erode it. Stoic philosophy 
teaches us the importance of self-preservation through the establishment of boundaries, Marcus Aurelius, one of Stoicism's great thinkers, emphasized the need to maintain a rational mind, unswayed by external forces. He believed that by controlling our internal state, we effectively draw boundaries around our peace of mind, keeping out the chaos that others might bring. These boundaries are not about building walls that isolate us, but about creating a clear understanding of where our authority begins and ends. When we set boundaries, we communicate to others that we are not to be trifled with, that our time, energy, and resources are valuable, and that we will not allow them to be wasted or exploited. This is not an act of arrogance, but one of self-respect, a key ingredient in commanding respect from others. Psychologically, people tend to test boundaries to understand where they stand with us. When we enforce our limits firmly yet calmly, we send a powerful message. We are in control of our lives, and we will not allow others to dictate our terms. This clarity and firmness often dissuade others from attempting to overstep as they realize that their efforts will be met with resistance. However, the art of boundaries is also about understanding when to be flexible. A wise ruler knows that some battles are not worth fighting and that rigidity can sometimes lead to unnecessary conflict. The key is to balance firmness with wisdom, enforcing boundaries where it truly matters and allowing flexibility where it does not compromise our core values or authority. To use this law effectively, we must be mindful of our interactions with others, always aware of when our boundaries are being tested. We should practice asserting ourselves calmly and confidently without anger or aggression. In doing so, we protect our domain and ensure that our authority remains unchallenged. At the same time, we should be vigilant of those who may use their own boundaries as a weapon against us, disguising manipulation as self-respect. By understanding this dynamic, we can navigate relationships with greater clarity and avoid being drawn into power struggles that do not serve our higher purpose. Ultimately, the art of boundaries is a form of self-mastery. It is about knowing who we are, what we stand for, and what we will not tolerate. When we embody this understanding, we naturally command the respect of others, not through force, but through the strength of our convictions. This is the essence of acting like a king, to rule not just over others, but over ourselves, with wisdom, clarity, and unyielding resolve. If you can take responsibilities, you are already a king. The next chapter is all about that. Chapter 5 the responsibility of authority. With great power comes great responsibility. This ancient wisdom holds true for anyone who seeks to act like a king. To carry oneself with the dignity and authority of a ruler is not merely to enjoy the privileges that come with respect and deference. It is also to shoulder the weight of leadership with integrity and purpose. True power is not about domination, but about stewardship guiding others with wisdom, protecting what is just, and ensuring that our influence serves the greater good. In the philosophy of Stoicism, the concept of sympathia emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that we are all part of a greater whole, and our actions reverberate throughout the community. As such, those who wield authority have a duty to consider the impact of their decisions on others. To act like a king is to embrace this responsibility, understanding that our power is not an end in itself, but a means to contribute to the harmony and well-being of those we lead. A ruler who fails to recognize this responsibility risks becoming a tyrant, someone who rules through fear and coercion rather than respect and wisdom. History is replete with examples of leaders who, intoxicated by their own power, lost sight of their duties to those they governed. These leaders often met their downfall, not because of external threats, but because they alienated those they were meant to serve. Authority, when abused, becomes fragile. It is only through mindful leadership, rooted in a deep sense of responsibility, that it can be sustained. 
Psychologically, the exercise of power can lead to what is known as the power paradox. This phenomenon, studied by psychologist Datcher Keltner in the early 2000s, suggests that while power initially increases a person's ability to act in others' interests, it can eventually lead to self-centeredness and a lack of empathy if not checked by a strong moral compass. A ruler who remains aware of this paradox and actively works to counter it by staying grounded and empathetic is far more likely to maintain their authority in the long term. To apply this law of authority with responsibility, we must constantly evaluate our motives and actions. Are we using our influence to uplift others or are we serving our own ego? Are we listening to those we lead or are we imposing our will upon them? These are the questions that a wise ruler asks themselves, ensuring that their power is exercised justly and compassionately. Furthermore, we must also be aware of how others might use this principle against us. Those who seek to manipulate or control us may do so by appealing to our sense of responsibility, twisting it to serve their own ends. To guard against this, we must be clear about our values and priorities. Discerning between genuine calls for leadership and attempts at exploitation, in the end, the responsibility of authority is a double-edged sword. It can be a source of immense fulfillment, allowing us to lead with purpose and leave a lasting positive impact on the world. But it also demands constant vigilance and self-awareness. To act like a king is to rise to this challenge, embodying the virtues of a true leader, wisdom, compassion, and integrity while remaining ever mindful of the great responsibility that comes with the crown.